Hello and welcome. I'm your host Aditi Singh and you're watching My India. On August 15th, 1947, India gained independence from British rule after 200 years of colonial domination. As the nation celebrates its 78th Independence Day, it is focused on achieving its ambitious goal of becoming a developed country by 2047. Now this vision reflects India's commitment to progress, innovation and sustainable development, striving to improve the quality of life for all its citizens while honoring its rich heritage. In celebration of the spirit of freedom, prosperity and unity, Indian citizens are proudly marking the 78th Independence Day with vibrant tricolor tattoos, symbolizing their deep pride and commitment to their nation. Today, Indians take immense pride in living in a country that is not only one of the world's fastest growing economies, but also a leader in space technology. India's growing political influence on the global stage solidifies its role as a key player. shaping international relations and driving global progress with dynamic fervor main bahut khush hu main aage dekh raha hu ki desh hamara aage ja raha hai aur hamari jo respect hai international level pe wo bahut zyada hai aur kafi impact pada hai even hum kabhi bhi mere kai relatives bahar rehte hain recently kal main apne mama se hi baat kar raha tha jo uk mein reh rahe hain to unhone mujhe kuch experience bataya tha ki jo indians ki ab image hai काफ़ी अच्छे तरीके देखा जाता है भी हाँ एक ईमानदार की नज़र से देखा जाता है बारहली कंट्री सबसे ज़्यादा तारीफ तो सरकार की करेंगे जिन्होंने हर मुद्दे पे मतलब जैसे सिचुएशन रहा हर सिचुएशन में फिट बैठ करके वो आधा जैसे मान लीजिए अभी जैसे बांग्लादेश चल रहा था कोई भी और जहाँ भी हो उससे पहले यूक्रेन हो रहा था उस जगह से आदमी को निकालना हर जो ये साफ दिखता है कि आगे भी हमारा देश और एक मजबूत बनता जा रहा है ये देख करके दूसरे कंट्री वाले भी हमसे घबराते हैं ये बोला नहीं नहीं सही बात है अगर भारत हर जगह जाकर इन्वॉल्व होकर के उन कामों को बाहर करके लेके आ जाता है और अपनी आज़ादी निकाल सकता है तो आने वाले देश में हमारे जो टाइम आएगा उस समय हमारे पर, मतलब जितने भी युवाएं होंगे वो युवा की मतलब कि युवा शक्ति जैसा होता है वो बन के आएगा सामने भारत India's ambitious vision for 2047 centers on becoming a developed nation through a comprehensive blend of economic and social reforms. The roadmap includes accelerating industrial growth, driving technological innovation, and overhauling infrastructure. Investing in education and healthcare stands at the forefront, alongside a commitment to sustainable development and digital transformation. The government is focused on improving the ease of doing business to attract global investments. Policies are crafted to address poverty, boost employment, and uplift the quality of life for all citizens. By leveraging its demographic dividend and a burgeoning middle class, India aims to harness these strengths while tackling challenges like inequality and environmental sustainability. The journey towards development is not just about growth. but also about fostering inclusivity and resilience for a brighter future main kehna chahunga bharat ke liye golden era hai vaishvik paristhitiyon ke tulna mein bhi dekhe ye golden era hai ye hamara swarnim kaal khand hai mere pyare desh vaasiyo ye avsar hame jaane nahi dena hai ye mauka hame jaane nahi dena chahiye aur isi mauke ko pakad kar ke अपने सपने और संकल्पों को लेकर के चल पड़ेंगे तो हम देश की स्वर्णिम भारत की जो अपेक्षा और हमें विकसित भारत का 2047 का लक्ष्य हम पूरा करके रहेंगे इंडिया पॉपुलेशन हैज सरपास चाइनाज मेकिंग इट द मोस्ट पॉपुलस कंट्री ऑन अर्थ दिस शिफ्ट प्रेजेंट्स बोथ ऑपरचुनिटीज एंड चैलेंजेस टू रियलाइज प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदीज विजन India aims to harness its population's creative potential by providing the necessary skills and opportunities for transformative growth. Successfully navigating these challenges could position India as a global model for inclusive and sustainable development, offering valuable lessons in balancing growth with equity and environmental stewardship. 
India is making significant strides towards achieving self-reliance in military equipment production, reducing its dependency on imports. And through initiatives like Make in India and the Defence Production and Export Promotion Policy, the country is bolstering indigenous manufacturing, fostering innovation and enhancing its defence capabilities. These efforts are positioning India as a rising force in the global defence industry to become a major exporter of defence equipment. In India's largest multinational military exercise, Tarang Shakti, the indigenous light combat aircraft Tejas stole the spotlight, flying alongside the Rafale and Eurofighter Typhoon. At the Sular Air Base in Tamil Nadu, Tejas captivated military leaders, earning high praise from the Air Force Chiefs of France, Germany and Spain. For the first time, the Defence Aviation Expo featured participation from five defence public sector undertakings, 20 private companies, 20 micro, small and medium enterprises and 16 startups, all leveraging foreign investments and promoting indigenous exports. This expo presents a significant opportunity for European investments to enhance India's defence manufacturing ecosystem and strengthen its position as a global defence player. We were very happy to be able to, to fly uh, alongside uh, Indian uh, aircraft such as uh, Tejas. Uh, our pilots were able to fly uh, inboard uh, the Tejas. It was a great experience for them and it's uh, very interesting for us to fly, to perform uh, air operation with uh, different uh, aircraft and aircraft that we are not used to fly with, uh, for example the Tejas. The DRDO is developing the Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft to boost India's self-reliance in defense. This initiative aligns with the Atmani Rabara, or Self-Reliant India Mission, emphasizing indigenous technology and innovation. AMCA is the 5.5 generation fighter. It's a stealth aircraft. We have just started the development process. The design is now complete. And we hope to complete our development trials by 2034 and it should get inducted by 2035. This is truly a world-class fighter. There are very few countries which operate stealth aircraft and India will be one of the few countries who will be able to develop a stealth aircraft. So it is going to be a very proud moment when the development is complete. India is exporting military hardware to about 85 countries involving around 100 local firms. The country aims to achieve its defence export target of $6 billion in the next five years. India's export of the BrahMos missile to the Philippines underscores its growing defence export potential and strategic partnerships. Co-developed with Russia, the supersonic cruise missile reflects India's advanced defence capabilities and its commitment to international standards. This move is part of India's broader strategy to boost defence exports and reduce reliance on imports. The country now exports a range of military hardware, including missiles, artillery guns, rockets, armoured vehicles, patrol vessels, protective gear, radars, surveillance systems and ammunition. The government is promoting public-private partnerships to expand defence exports to over a hundred countries. DRDO is uh, aimed and the objective of DRDO is to develop the latest products and what products can be produced by the industry, they should do it. So that you know, all the major products under, are undergoing development and production partner. So we'll identify one uh, big industry player uh, and he will produce all the military hardware which we have designed and we are able to transfer the technology to them. In April, India's Defence Ministry announced a 32.5 increase in defence exports for financial year 2023 to 2024, surpassing 2.5 billion for the first time ever. This marks a significant rise from the previous year's 1.9 billion and reflects a 31-fold growth over the past decade. India's focus on indigenous technology and manufacturing aims to reduce reliance on imports and boost its global defence equipment presence.
Now let's visit Mehrauli in Delhi, home to the shrine of Qutbuddin Bakhtiar Kaki, a devoted disciple of Moinuddin Chishti. Kaki deeply impacted Delhi's spiritual life with his wisdom. The sacred site, welcoming people of all faiths, embodies interfaith harmony and celebrates diversity. We explore as how Kaki's legacy continues to inspire through devotion and music at his shrine. Located in the age-old center of Mehroli, Delhi, the shrine of Qutbuddin Bakhtiar Kaki stands as a powerful testament to spiritual unity, peace, and interfaith harmony. This shrine, steeped in centuries of tradition, is not just a place of worship but a symbol of Delhi's composite culture, bringing together people of diverse faiths under the banner of love, devotion, and unity. Qutbuddin Bakhtiar Kaki was a respected Sufi saint from the Chishti order and a dedicated follower of the famous Khwaja Moedun Chishti of Ajmer. His spiritual background connected him to a major mystical tradition in India known for teaching universal love and compassion and bridging different religions. I have been here for a long time. I have come to get a peace here. People ask the people जो दिल से मांगते हैं देने वाला तो ऊपर वाला है बट जरिया किसी ना किसी का होना चाहिए तो हम लोग यहाँ आते हैं यहाँ से हमारा फैज में मिलता है हमारी झोलियाँ बढ़ जाती हैं The shrine of Qutbuddin Bakhtiar Kaki stands as a shining example of communal harmony embodying the essence of unity and mutual respect The sacred site transcends religious differences creating a space where people from various backgrounds and beliefs can unite in peace and understanding its enduring legacy serves as a powerful reminder of the strength found in embracing diversity and nurturing interfaith connections. Today, you will go anywhere, in any place in Darga Sharif, so you can see that you can see that there are Hindus, Muslims, and all people of the world, 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 and all people of the world. So, the Sufis have always given the pagam, they have always given the Ekeshwarwat, और वहतुल वजूद का पैगाम दिया और हिंदू मुसलमान की एकता पे हमेशा जोर दिया है तो यही वजह है कि जो गंगा जमुना तहजीब है उसमें आप देख सकते हैं कि उसमें हिंदू मुसलमान हम सब लोग मिलजुल कर एक साथ बढ़ चढ़ के हिस्सा लेते हैं और सब यहाँ पे दरगाह शरीफ में आते हैं और सब लोग मिलके उर्स करते हैं या यहाँ पर लंगर करवाते हैं In today's busy and often divided Delhi, the shrine of Qutbuddin Bakhtiar Kaki is a lasting symbol of faith's ability to bring people together. The Dargah is more than just a religious site, it's a place where history, music and devotion converge, continuing to inspire and unite people as Kaki did long ago. Now let's delve into World in Focus, featuring the latest global developments and events shaping our world. At the 2024 World Robot Conference held on August 21, China's leading robotics companies highlighted their latest advancements in humanoid robots and robot dogs. They are optimistic that these robots, which resemble humans and dogs, could become a common feature in households in the future, despite the current challenges in mass production and deployment. The showcased humanoid robots demonstrated their capabilities by performing basic tasks such as picking up objects, navigating obstacles, and replicating human movements and expressions. Soterius Tarsinopoulos, the product manager for humanoid robots at UV Tech Robotics, anticipates that the market for these robots could expand to be 10 times larger than electric vehicle market, with a future where each home might have one to two humanoid robots. Presently, humanoid robots are mainly utilized for simple inspection and internal logistics in industrial settings. India, once dominated by imported toys, is witnessing a transformative resurgence of traditional and made-in-India products. 
The import of toys in the country saw a sharp decline of 57% in financial year 2022 to 2023. The Indian toy market is now focusing on providing children with toys that aid in their overall physical and intellectual development. Let's delve into India's journey of being vocal for locals. Building blocks, puzzles, dolls and stuffies. Toys are a child's best friend. They bring joy and laughter, can be educational, and can play a fundamental role in a child's development. In India, where over 158 million children are in the age group of 0 to 6, there is a huge market for toys of all makes and models. India used to import a large percentage of toys until August 2020, when Prime Minister Narendra Modi gave a clarion call to rebrand the Indian toy story. He emphasized the need for the right kind of toys for children, using toys as a learning resource, designing toys based on the Indian value system, Indian history and culture, to strengthen domestic designing, and positioning India as a global manufacturing hub for toys. The government devised a comprehensive action plan to boost local manufacturing and make India the global toy hub by incentivizing the manufacturers. The dividends soon emerged. As an outcome, the Indian toy industry witnessed remarkable growth in financial year 2022 to 2023 in comparison to financial year 2014 to 2015, with the exports of toys surging by an impressive 60% from 203.46 million in 2018 to 2019 to 325.72 million in the fiscal year 2022 to 2023. Today, the size of the country's domestic market stands at an estimated value of 1.5 billion and is projected to reach 3 billion by 2028. The sector is fragmented, however, with 90% of the market lacking organization and 4,000 toy industry units from micro, small and medium enterprises. There is even more room for growth. This is very true that India has uh, uh, really ramped up its production and uh, uh, stopped the imports from China. This is mainly because of the uh, B implementation of the BIS standards for uh, toy safety and those being put under uh, uh, the QCO. And now uh, for uh, shipping to India, any Chinese factory will first have to get themselves approved. This method applies to all the, uh, for if we want to sell to China also. So uh, the Indian toy industry has managed to do this primarily on account of uh, the QCO. And uh, this is just the beginning. I think uh, uh, because of the QCO, the Indian industry has realized that they can do a lot more products than they thought that they were even capable of. And uh, I think in the future, they are going to have much more, uh, uh, they're going to grow much more than this. With a revival of centuries old traditional art forms like Channa Patna toys of Karnataka, the Indian toy industry today is offering a green alternative to world away from harmful plastics and other man-made chemically ingrained play items. We will take you to the toy town of Karnataka, Channapatna, where the artisans have been meticulously crafting eco-friendly toys for thousands of years, ensuring a sustainable and playful future for children. From traditional handcrafted play items to the most advanced robotic gadgets, the Indian toy industry is now booming. Today, where the world market is dominated by harmful plastic toys, the Indian toy industry is thriving to offer the world a sustainable alternative to cater to their demands. Amongst the long-standing art of toy making, the Chanapatna toy of Karnataka stands out as a gleaming glory of India's age-old traditions. Chanapatna, often regarded as the toy town of India, is known for its vibrant and intricately handcrafted wooden toys. These toys are often coated with a non-toxic natural lacquer and dyes extracted from vegetables and trees. In a step towards an eco-friendly environment, for centuries these artisans have meticulously crafted these wooden toys, carrying forward the legacy of their forefathers. 100 years of business. Our forefathers have been doing this for 4 generations. 
भी हम हैंड ओवर कर लेके जा रहे हैं अभी इधर एक है फेमस चनपटना टॉयस है ये पूरा लैकरिंग टॉयस आता है विथ नॉन लेट केमिकल विथ आता है आपको जो ये कलरिंग लगाते हैं लैकर वगैरह सभी ऐसा वगैरह सभी लैकर आता ना ये सभी आके नॉन टॉक्सिक रहता है कहीं भी वर्ल्ड में नहीं बनता ये इधर बर्निंग करके ये करके इसका लैक आता है नेचुरली वेजिटेबल डे डाल के बनवाते हैं इसीलिए ये फेमस है फर्स्ट पर्टिकुलर कुछ अलग अलग स्टेट में एग्जीबिशन अभी गवर्नमेंट एग्जीबिशन लगता है कर्नाटका डेवलपमेंट का एक एग्जीबिशन लगता है अभी आपके दिल्ली में बोले तो दिल्ली हाट में लगता है अभी गुजरात में बोला सूरज कंड बोल के उधर एक लगता है जो भी है हमारा लैकर वाले का जो भी टॉयस है बनता है वो वाला भी अभी चला ही जा रहा है वो अभी तो बहुत सारे आइटम्स तो इंपोर्ट हो रहा है लेकिन हमारा जो भी है लैकर आइटम्स और जो भी टॉयस है वो एकदम बढ़िया रहता है वो नॉन टॉक्सिक कलर्स यूज करते हैं हम लोग वाटर पेंट में भी रहते या फिर लैकर में भी रहते दोनों में भी वाटर ये केमिकल फ्री कलर यूज करते हैं वो तो उसके लिए बढ़िया रहता है और बच्चों को हार्मफुल वगैरह केमिकल ये नहीं रहता अगर मुंह में लेके कोई बाइटिंग वगैरह करेंगे तो भी कोई हार्मफुलनेस नहीं रहेगा The handcrafted wooden animals, birds, figures of Hindu gods and goddesses, traditional folks, and decorative items like beads and hangings are some of the most popular Chhanapatna art. The making of artifacts requires great artistic prowess and craftsmanship. Following which, the artisans go through an intensive process of cutting and shaping wooden pieces into artistic pieces, characterized by intricate carving and the coating of naturally extracted dyes onto them. Instances like these not only showcase the significance of Indian traditional crafts, but also help in achieving sustainability goals, making it a win-win for both people and the planet. Creating sand art is a unique way to express creativity and connect with nature. Today we meet Sudarshan Patnaik, a renowned artist who has elevated sand into an extraordinary art form, earning global acclaim. and making india proud his stunning sculptures featured at major events and festivals showcase his creativity and dedication let's explore how his work revitalizes the art of sand sculpting golden beach in puri is a haven for tourists where gentle waves embrace the shore in a serene symphony Adding to its allure is the stunning sand art celebrated by artist Sudarshan Patnaik, who has dedicated his life to transforming sand into a canvas of creativity. Internationally renowned for his craft, Sudarshan uses special techniques to carve remarkable images, each carrying a story and message. His sand sculptures are not just beautiful, but also aim to raise awareness on important issues. Today, his latest creation highlights an environmental message, sparking conversation and reflection. देखिए ये नेचर आर्ट हमने बनाया। I love nature। तो हम हमारा नेचर को कितना अफेक्शन से जुड़े हुए हैं। तो उसी को लेकर हमने ये फेस बनाया और उसमें फेस के चारों तरफ हमने जो यहाँ पर जो नेचर से पानी से जो आके पड़ा हुआ था जो जो पत्ता है जो आ, ग्रीन पड़ा हुआ था तो उसी को देख ही इसको हमने क्रिएट किया है सैंड आर्ट एक ऐसा ये है कि हम हर दिन समंदर किनारे आते हैं हर दिन समंदर हमें एक नया कैनवस देता है वही हमारा लाइफ का ये होता है क्योंकि बहुत सारे लोगों में ये क्वेश्चन होता है कि सैंड आर्ट का क्या वैल्यू है वो तो रुकता नहीं है बट लाइफ में कोई भी ऐसा चीज़ नहीं है जो रुक जाता है हर चीज़ वही आता है जाता है तो हमें जो आज एन आर्टिस्ट हम जो बनाते हैं जो उसको टूरिस्ट देखते हैं जो आर्ट लवर्स देखते हैं वो ही सब से बड़ा होता है अ रिसिपियंट ऑफ न्यूमरस नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल अवार्ड्स इंक्लूडिंग अ गिनेस वर्ल्ड रिकॉर्ड सुदर्शन वाज ऑनर्ड विद द पद्म श्री द फोर्थ हाईएस्ट सिविलियन अवार्ड बाय द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया इन 2014 रिसेंटली ही वन द गोल्डन सैंड मास्टर अवार्ड एट एन इंटरनेशनल चैंपियनशिप इन रशिया earning congratulations from Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Despite only studying up to the 5th grade and working as a child laborer, Sudarshan's passion for art propelled him to success. बहुत सारे स्ट्रगल्स मेरे लाइफ में आए मुझे चाय का दुकान करना पड़ा पान का दुकान करना पड़ा उस समय मैंने 
दुकान करके मेरे लाइफ को मैं चला रहा था चला रहा था मैंने उनके घर में काम कर रहा था फिर चाय का दुकान कर रहा था फिर जब भी टाइम मिलता था मैं भाग के समंदर किनारे जाके कुछ ना कुछ बनाता था आफ्टर लॉन्ग टाइम स्ट्रगल करने के बाद कुछ टूरिस्ट लोगों ने मेरा पिक्चर्स लिया बाहर स्पेंड किया डिफरेंट न्यूज़ में आया उसके बाद फॉरेन से कुछ टूरिस्ट आए थे मेरे पिक्चर्स लेके फॉरेन कंट्रीज़ में उनको वहाँ पर दिखाए क्योंकि ये ऑलरेडी इंटरनेशनली बहुत नोन आर्ट फॉर्म था मुझे पता नहीं था कि इसके ऊपर वर्ल्ड चैम्पियनशिप यू एस ओपन हीरो ओपन इतने सारे कंपटीशन्स हो रहे हैं जिसमें कि अराउंड द वर्ल्ड ग्लोबली आर्टिस्ट पार्टिसिपेट कर रहे हैं तो मुझे चांस तो मिला पार्टिसिपेट करने के लिए जब पहले बार मुझे इन्विटेशन आया Manas Kumar Sahu has long been involved in sand art and has recently integrated sand animation into his work. In sand animation, the artist creates images by moving sand on a flat surface with their fingers. This versatile art form can be performed anywhere and at any time. Sahu has mastered this craft, showcasing it both in India and abroad. He has received several awards and was a finalist on India's Got Talent, a reality TV show. जब इंडियाज़ गॉट टैलेंट गए थे तब एक एक्सपेरिमेंटल वर्क लेके गए थे हम लोगों को पता नहीं था ये आर्ट लोग पसंद करेंगे या नहीं मे बी एक या दो राउंड में हम लोगों को निकाल देंगे पर ये आर्ट वहीं से शुरुआत हुआ जैसे जो ऑडियंस थे और जो जजेस थे हमें बहुत इनक्रेज किए क्योंकि उस समय आर्ट इतना अच्छा नहीं था डेफिनेटली बहुत टूटी फूटी आर्ट लेके हम लोग गए थे पर उन लोगों को बहुत पसंद आया और वो बहुत इनक्रेज किए तभी से सैन एनिमेशन हम लोग प्रैक्टिस करते करते आज बहुत सैन एनिमेशन डेवलप हो गया है और लोग बहुत पसंद कर रहे हैं इस आर्ट फॉर्म को और ये आर्ट फॉर्म जैसे बहुत सारे कंट्रीज़ में हम लोग इसको एग्जिबिशन और डेमोस्ट्रेशन कर कर चुके हैं Manas didn't keep this art to himself. He also taught his wife, Pranati Prasti. Now, they perform sand animation together. Recently, they showcased their work at the Nida Mukesh Ambani Cultural Center. I was watching all of them how to make a sand art. But I didn't get the opportunity to make a sand art. So, when I was born with Manas Ji, तो मैं देख रही हर रोज़ देख रहा था कि वो कैसे बनाते हैं तो मुझे भी इंटरेस्ट हुआ कि मैं भी कुछ बनाऊं और मेरा इंटरेस्ट देखे वो बोले कि ठीक है चलो मैं तुम्हें सिखा लेती हूँ तो मैंने वो भी मुझे सिखाए तो अभी मैं बना सकती हूँ वाल सुदर्शन पटनायक एंड पूरी इज टेकिंग सैंड आर्ट न्यू हाइट्स मानस कुमार साहू इज एडिंग न्यू डिमेंशन टू सैंड एनिमेशन Both artists are making an international impact and inspiring many others. Sudarshan Patnaik, acclaimed for his intricate sand sculptures, has gained global recognition and revitalized the ancient art of sand sculpting, inspiring artists and audiences worldwide. With that it's a wrap on today's episode of My India but we will see you next week at the same time till then goodbye and take care